Today we came to Itapira, in the countryside of São Paulo, to show you how a bicycle is made. Shall we check it out? We came to First Bikes, which is a Brazilian manufacturer, and what's really cool is that they make the bicycle absolutely from scratch. The raw material is simply aluminum pipes. The first step is cutting, but later I'll tell you that it gets more complicated. Some pipes, for example, will be bent. This is done on a steel base attached to a hydraulic press. Doing this is very satisfying. The same part needs a notch to be welded, and the one that will do this is a robotic hole saw. All is well calibrated, so the measurements are accurate. Some holes, like these on the bottom bracket, the part of the frame where the crankset is attached, are also made with the press. This part will still need an internal thread. It is turned on a computer-controlled machine, which also finishes the area where the fork and the stem, where the handlebars go, are attached. Here the chassis will be marked, it's a code that goes underneath, and each bicycle has a different one. If your bicycle is stolen, you can easily prove it's yours without much explanation. It's a kind of steel stamp at the tip of the hydraulic press that will mark the aluminum. The dropout, which is that part that goes at the end of the frame where the rear wheel is attached, is made in a completely different way than I imagined. What arrives here is a steel bar with a really weird shape, full of strange curves. But when the machine cuts it, this is what comes out on the other side. It's almost ready to be welded onto the frame. I swear I thought this was an aluminum sheet, cut with a laser or something like that, but it's not. I'm just showing a few examples of the processes that happen here, where the raw material arrives. This press behind me is capable of performing four tasks simultaneously. This hole, a vertical indentation, another one horizontal, and even a cut at the tip. It's time to weld, and it's not all done by eye, no. The pieces are placed in a jig, and first a tack weld is done. It's a machine similar to the one we use on Manual do Mundo, and it's like they're putting little drops of glue just to keep the pieces in place. After that comes the real welding. It's the tungsten inert gas type, it's a tip that heats up on one side, and on the other they feed in an aluminum wire that melts and sticks everything together. It's a weld that has a really nice finish, and I've never worked with this type before, so let's not miss the chance to make a mess here, right? Yeah, and I have to admit to you guys that it's really something that requires a skill that's way beyond my abilities. Look at this awful thing I made! If my first attempt was like a pigeon's droppings, this second attempt is more like an ostrich's more or less. Of course, that's not what happens with professional welding. Upon close inspection, you'll notice no small blobs or incorrectly burned areas. It's as if a bead forms on top of the place that was welded. Even with all the care to get everything just right, welding heats up the aluminum a lot. And that makes it expand a little and it can lose its measurements. So now the bicycle is going to go through a general alignment stage. This ensures, for example, that the rear wheel is exactly behind the front wheel. One thing aligns well with the other. At this point, the aluminum is already quite dirty. So the frame goes through an acid bath and comes out like this, looks shining on the other side. The frame has a lot of curves, which I thought were just for looks to make it pretty, but they're not. Here in the front, for example, there's these balls so the bike's suspension doesn't hit. This little dent here is so the crank doesn't hit. This inner curve is to let the tire pass through. And here at the end, both tips have to be parallel to each other. That's why there's this curve in the middle. It's time to go through the first oven. These frames will stay in there for 6 hours at 190 degrees Celsius. This reorganizes the aluminum atoms inside the metal and makes it much stronger. Shall we paint? First, a light sanding is done, and then the frame gets a powder coating that sticks to the metal through static electricity. It's like the bike is the pen and the paint is these little pieces of paper. The result is really crazy. This ends up looking like velvet. It makes you want to run your hand over it to feel the texture, but I can't do that because the paint is completely loose. For it to set, the painting needs to go through an oven at 195 degrees Celsius. There, the paint will melt and stick to the metal. 
The result is really good. The paint stays firm and very even, just like a refrigerator paint job. A thin film with a water-based adhesive remains for the sticking part. It's applied in a very delicate way so that no bubbles are left. I tried it here, but I don't think I did very well as usual. After that, the frame needs to rest overnight so the glue can dry. Despite thin adhesive, this doesn't come off easily. Contrary to expectations, they clean it thoroughly to remove all the glue, then apply a layer of electrostatic varnish, which looks white here, but then the frame goes into the oven one last time and the varnish becomes transparent. In the end, if you run your hand over it, it's impossible to feel the texture. And this here is the final product from the Itafira factory, a 100% national frame. This is the entry-level model for women, featuring the curve we saw being made at the press. This one here is a more complex frame, its front is conical. Here we have a shaped tube, it starts out a bit thick and then tapers. And the rear is quite short, with the seat post curved so the wheel doesn't hit it. Looking from a distance, you might think it's heavy, but this here weighs 1 kilo and 900 grams, it's very light. The final assembly will take place at another first factory in Jundiaí, but the assembler came here to show us the process. All the parts are imported and the work takes only half an hour. It's much faster than making the frame. The bicycle is finished. Let's go for a ride. What I think is cool about Bora Ver is that after we see how something is made, we start to look at everything differently. Now, the next time I look at the bicycle frame, I'll think about every weld. The reason for every little curve that's there. I hope that happens to you too, who are watching this video. Since you watched the entire video, I'd like to ask you for something. We're finalists in the second edition of the YouTube Digital Education Award. And the choice between the three finalists is by popular vote. So, if you could give us a little help, I'm leaving the link down here, and I'm also putting a quick response code here, if you're watching on television so you can vote. When you open it, it will be a community post from YouTube Edu. Scroll down to the YouTubers with over 1 million subscribers category. And if you like us, just click on the Manual Do Mundo logo right there. I really appreciate it, okay? Thanks! As a suggestion, if you like Boraver, I'll leave another Boraver about transportation, which is really cool, one of my favorites, which is about how a tire is made.